Don't fight it. It's time to go up a size. This is the biggest, the biggest, the biggest. This is the biggest. Our biggest show. The Hodaki Big Show. With Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Well, good day, you mad boss. It's great to have your company this Thursday afternoon. It is the 24th of August, 2023, and you, yes, you, are listening to The Big Show, Hoity J, Minogio, and Keezy, you mad bastard, to take you through your afternoon, Mogi. I'm not going to say anything, mate, um, apart from magnificent as always. Thanks, mate. I uh, had a bit of a shocker today. Um, I like to co- try and come in here pumped up if sure. I can for yeah, you, because yeah. I know how much you like it. And I went to the gym there, and I swiped my little swipey card, went, Beep, beep. No good. Oh, or maybe no. it, maybe it went bump bum. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, didn't let me in. My uh, memberships run out. Oh, bugger. so I stand at the door going swipe. People looking at me on the inside of the gym. Swipe, swipe. Not happening. Swipe. What's going on? Memberships run out. So back. I had to do the walk of shame. It's the gym equivalent of the walk of shame. Back into your car. Drive away. No workout. Felt yeah. like a real. Loser. It's just one of those days, obviously, mate. Listen to our uh, podcast outro today. I had a very similar thing happen to me today with the old boop 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 boop. Keezy, I know you're excited. Big night here at NZ Me. A big party going on. You can't wait to fill your boots. I can't wait to fill my boots, actually. They're getting stuck in out in the office right now. You know that I'm planning to fill said boots. When my wife drops me off. Yeah. Which is what happened today. She dropped me off. Is she uh, picking you up as well? Yep. We've got an agreement. Basically, any time before nine thirty, she'll give me a lift home. Oh, you'd seem to do pickups later than that. Yeah, I know, but she does five pickups for my one pickup. Oh, okay. right, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so that, we've got that right. actually makes sense. I push mine back to midnight for her, so that's fine. Yes, so yeah. Yeah, very much looking forward to it though. Looking forward to the countdown as well, fellas. Hey, speaking of which, team, should we get stuck into it? Eh? Yeah, let's kick it off, shall we, Keezy? Five oh six. Yeah, I believe so, mate. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Oh, yes, indeed. Coming in at a whopping 5.06. The Black Seeds there on the uh, Radio Hodaki Big Show this Thursday afternoon. But right now, it's time for... The Big Poll. Yes, indeed. Very simple question today. A four-day working week, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've got an overwhelming feeling, Mogi, the answer's going to be yes to this particular question. Of course, you've got your your backbones, like your farmers and so forth, sure. who tend to, you know, they, they'll they argue they work seven days a week, mate. Yep. Um, but, you know, that, excluding that sort of scenario, uh, over in the UK, they've done it. And everyone yep. was going to. Everyone was saying, "Oh my God, productivity is going to drop. It's going to be a disaster." Quite the opposite happened. Productivity didn't drop. In fact, in many areas, productivity uh, went up because people were so much happier in their lives. And indeed, fellas, I have a friend whose company adopted the four-day working week here in New Zealand. She said her life has profoundly changed. She loves going to work now. She works harder. She does more doing a four-day working week, knowing, Mogi, that she has three days off. No, that's right. And I think <clears throat> I think everybody will think, oh, this is quite a simple choice, actually. Everybody wants a four-day working week. Yes. But I think this will be split between employers and employees. And yes. I take your point. But for me, I own a small business, been going for about a year. I can't get enough done in seven days. Right. So dropping it back to four days. Not going to happen. Uh, it would just be an absolute. You could turn the lights out, man. Sure. Be all over. Whereas me, I'd just do this show. So yeah, let's only make it four days a week. Yeah. Oh, oh, that no. part of it would be good. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. Right. Because I see this show as an essential service. Oh, well, it is. You know what I mean? And, wow. And, I mean, I, I, would, I would cop it for the listeners and do a five day working week. Uh, you know, just as for what the you mean, p- for the, That's what we're doing you now. Know, for all the for all the legends out there that take the time to listen to the show. So What's no, a I w- I wouldn't change a backbone. Oh, a backbone. Um, yeah. You know, I wouldn't change at all. But yes, you you bring up an interesting point. Re employers over employees. That's mm. right. So I mean, how about? <laughs> If it was to be a four-day working week, would you have longer days? Is that how it would work? Seven, Sometimes you do, yeah. Seven till six, is if you were to do mm. a nine to five, mm. you add, you know, is that how mm. it would work? Well, potentially, yeah. Uh, do you still get your 40 hours? I think you still have to get your 40 hours in. That's right. Is that right? No, I don't think so. Is it just down to 32? Yeah, it's, right. it, it's down. And also what they're, what they're proposing too is that there's no drop in wage. So therefore, if you're an employer going, yeah, but... The other side of that is, if productivity is up as a result of that, yeah. then you can't argue that actually I'm losing money. But yeah, it's, what but if, if I'm getting two hundred, if I'm getting sort of three, let's say two hundred emails a day, 
Uh, that's uh, a thousand a week, a five day week. But I'd be cramming those all up into four days. Yeah, so I'd have yeah. to answer them all in four days. Yeah, you would be you would be more productive. You'd burn your ass out too. Yeah, burn your ass out. Um, <laughs> also, if you've got a cafe that's open seven days a week, you'd have to have more staff because they only work four days a week. So you'd have to have more staff, which make it God, harder. this is more complicated yeah, than is. I thought. It is. Good one, Jase. This yeah. is your idea, man. Well, you have a vote on uh, our Instagram account, or you can text us on 3483, or give us a call on 0800 Hodaki. But in the meantime, let's get back to that countdown, shall we? That's Good right. On, 90s man. till now. Song number 505. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Greta Van Fleet there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Thursday afternoon. Coming in at 5.05 there, Mogi. Yeah. We don't play a lot of Greta Van Fleet. No, we don't. No, we don't. Because And I asked Greg Preble about this, our music guy, and he was like, well, if you want to listen to Greta Van Fleet, why don't I just play more Led Zeppelin? Yeah. I kind of look at them... As a sort of poor man's Led Zeppelin. I think they're bloody good. Do they you? are, they they are, are. good. They're Very similar good. I think the lead trouble, singers. I think the trouble with them is that they are just so clearly taking the piss by imitating Led Zeppelin. And he's yeah, got an yeah. amazing voice, yeah. right? Yeah, and even even down to the sort of the, the clothing and all that sort of stuff, they're, like, they're out of the 70s. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, they're not. Sure. They're born in like 1995. So. I know. So they should wear baggy trousers... Or tight jeans and weird hoodies. Weird hoodies, yeah, and a blouse. <laughs> I was talking about my tight oh, jeans. Oh, <laughs> right, yes. I see. Um, yeah, I do wear quite tight trousers myself, actually. Yeah, I've... Well, that's because my legs are burgeoning out at the moment with all my leg exercises. Actually, the thing about Liz, like everybody... So when I got with my missus, uh, I was wearing the baggy pants. I had oh, the baggy you? pants on. I've never run baggy pants. No, no, I had the baggy pants. So I'm with her for, I don't know, three minutes, and then she's like, ah. Oh, you need to sort your pants out. Did you have like, straight cut jeans or something? Uh, boot cut. Boot cut, yeah, Yeah, right. I think so. And, yeah. po- and they're a bit flarier, but that was earlier on. That was in, uh, sort of in the 90s, early 2000s. But So I was like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, whatever. And so I got on the tight jeans. Anything to entrap her, Mogi. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, and now they've changed again. No, you can't wear tight You can't wear tight jeans. You've got to wear baggy ones. It's like, well, surely I'm old enough that... This, no one cares what I wear. This, yeah. this no has happened looking to me. At me. So I've got. So what I'm going to throw out all of my jeans that are perfectly fine because people that are half my age. Look, I'll be honest with you. Hang I'm on. I'm old enough to not care what people think how I oh, dress, and that's quite clear. But um, my mate Jamie, right? He's my fashionable friend. Whenever I need to know what's going on in the world of fashion, I see what he's wearing and then ignore it. No, and I asked him. I said, Jamie, I'm 32 now. For the first time in my life, I no longer like the way, the way fashion is heading. That's about how old I was, yeah. And, and I think I've found yeah. what I like wearing. And he's like, you got to get rid of the skinny jeans, Chris. It's not in anymore. Right, okay. But I hate the look of baggy stuff, you know? So, someone sent in a fantastic meme, actually, on that, uh, of a bulldog in skinny jeans. Oh, yeah, and, 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 yeah. and it was And it was remarkably similar to Didn't how look I look. You. Yeah. you know what I mean? In the fact, gut, the paunch. It, it, initially, I thought, God, is that me? It was a um, cross between the bo- both of us because they had bulging eyes. Yeah, and yeah, his yeah. Tongue was hanging out. Yeah, it was a shambles of a human. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what to. Um, I don't know what to do about it. The other concern I've got is that I'm going to Australia next month. What's yeah. going to happen over there? True. You're just people are going to be pointing at you and well, shoving you in front of a bus. We were in Wellington recently, and I saw a bloke. You're joking. A bloke who would have been mid fifties, still wearing the um, really baggy with silk boxes. Oh, yeah. And I was like, so he obviously found his look in the late 90s yeah. and is stuck with that. I don't want to be that yeah, guy because it looked random. Be guy. Well, I'm tempted to go back to Corduroy. <sighs> Corduroy's in. Yeah. Oh, it is? Apparently. Oh, according sweet. To Jamie. I can crack them out of the old wardrobe then. Yeah. I think somewhere between tight. Because what is he, a skinny and then tight? Is Stra- tight skinnier than uh, there's skinny? Skinny, super skinny, skinny. There's no tight. It just goes to slim, straight, boot. Okay. But we'll just do That's what Jace does and wear jeggings. Good on you, man. Keezy. <laughs> uh, song number 504. <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Weekdays at 4 on Radio Hodaki. Racing and Silver there coming in at 5.03 in the 90s till now. Countdown, eh, Mogi? Such a good song. How good. Yeah, very good. Such a good song. I think they deserved actually to win. The whole when thing. When you chose it as a throbber. Yeah, yeah. I thought so too. Let's not get into throbber debate. Yeah, shall no, we? we'll get into that tomorrow because I'm still steaming about that. <laughs>
absolutely steaming. Hey, um, speaking of steamers, um, the next door neighbour's dog. Oh. I can't even remember him having a dog, but it seems like he's well, he's absolutely got one now. And I think he, I think it comes and goes with the kids. Right. Um, and it's a, Is he a single dad? I think so, yeah. Right, okay. And he's a good bastard. And he's got a uh, a poodle, from what I can tell. Oh, I already of, don't like it. Agreed. Bit of a mid-range. Not small, not huge, but sort of a medium-sized bastard there. Brown. Oh, my What's least favourite colour of the of the Chocolate. colours. Yeah, I actually I like a lab, but not in a poodle. But I don't like any colour on a poodle. Yeah, I, don't like actually, a poodle. I, poodles. I just I just like the white more, to be honest. Yeah, because they get a bit it's a bit dirty around. Yeah, the back they look there. like nicotine stained pieces of. Yeah, they do. Right, foul. Um, so anyway, we work, I work from mostly I work from home. Right, and we we live in a um, in a house. You're joking. As a townhouse, and. Right next to the d- driveway, they're sort of stacked up. You know, you sort of find that in quite a lot of suburbs and all. Sure. They're stacked on it. So if I walk down the driveway, I'm right there to my right is the neighbour's lounge window. Yes. So there's no fence and then a gap and then, a you know, and then the house is right there. Yeah. And so this dog yesterday. Do you sort of wander up and down the driveway at night when they're in the lounge and stuff? No, nah, it's, oh. got, it's got that... Uh, that uh, Glass, you can't see it. Tint- oh, right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no scene through okay. it. And, and no matter how hard I try or how hard I press my bulges up to the glass, yeah, no no, I'm getting oh, that's pretty a much nothing. It is. It's a shame. Uh, this dog barked yesterday for about six and a half hours. Wow. And it was barking at me. It was standing on a couch with its head pressed up against the glass, looking at me in my office. Right. For six and a half hours. <laughs> um, and I'm wondering what do I do in that situation? Because it, and I, when I tell you it was it was non-stop. Yes. Non-stop for six and a half hours. It didn't take a two-minute break. Do you reckon they could put the shut the curtain in that room so it can't see you? I think that's an option. Or do you start wearing like an outfit? A disguise. I a thought disguise. I'd wear a disguise, yeah. If I thought I was Jace, yeah, like yeah. I'd borrow one of your hoodies. Yeah, sure then. Um, oh, I'd... Or put You're a, such a big bastard now. I don't know if you'd fit it, Mogi. Maybe they could put the dog on the other side of the house. But it just feels like the dog's bearing a grudge. Like sure. he wasn't even doing anything. Yeah, yeah. And like, he sort of... Are you sure you weren't? Were you doing anything weird? In the, or were you just sitting there with your bulges and just doing your office I was doing nothing. I'd taken the dog out uh, early in the morning right. for a steamer. Tinker. Tinker, yeah. Um, a tinker stinker. But she didn't go. Steamer. Um, oh. But it was still dark, you know what I mean? I, I'm thinking maybe that, that your next door neighbour's dog is aware that you have a dog and is wondering where your dog is and well, probably thought, wants to have a conversation through the window with the dog. Well, of course, my dog didn't know what was going on. Right, because she's Completely deaf. Completely deaf. Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking maybe that dog saw me doing a steamer on their front lawn in the morning when I took the dog for a walk, you know? Right. Wait, hang on. So you took Tinker out... So I, that you could do a steamer? Yeah, not Tinker. Oh, where does Tinker do them? Uh, in the back courtyard, and I pick them up with my hand. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. 502 there on the uh, radio, Hodaki, 90s till now countdown. The Viv. Have a bit of the old Viv. Hey, listen, just on that, by the way, the 90s till now countdown, Mogi, a lot of people texting and saying, when are we doing the big draw for the 90 vinyl? That's a good question. Uh, and I believe, uh, to let the people know out there, it's going to be next Thursday. So a week today, exactly. Yes, that's You right. could be the proud owner of 90 vinyls and be instantly cool. Uh, Thursday as well. The reason we're doing Thursday is because we're doing 900 songs from the 90s till now, and that will end Thursday on the big show. So that is going to be a big, mm. big show for us, and we'll be yeah. calling someone. So if you enter the draw, if you helped us by voting, by texting song to 3483, for the love of God, keep your phone on. Yeah. And if it says unknown caller, pick the damn thing up. Yeah. Because it'll um, be us. Yeah, it'll be us. Totally, mate. Uh, because it's been quite... Amazing of late, actually, the amount of prize winners we've rung who haven't answered their Unbelievable. phones. Unbelievable. One guy missed out on a million dollars. A million bucks. Oh, I mustn't have been here for that. Oh, uh, you know, you were here. I just think you were, you'd you had a big weekend and you weren't quite with us. Oh, right. Um, but, yeah, a million dollars. And he Unreal. must have been just absolutely kicking himself. Yeah. Well, my God, if, if I had just answered that phone call. Goose. To be honest, 
I'd rather have 90 vinyl than a million dollars. Um, I don't actually have any records at all. Do you guys have vinyl at all? At oh, home? yeah, I've got, as I say, about 800. I've got one. Yeah. Do you, and you have... Oh, Capital you've, Cities. Capital, Capital Cities. Cities. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Auckland band. Yeah. They wow. gave it to us when they came in for a yarn. That's yeah. right. And so, yeah. Jace, do you... Oh, you've got a gramophone, eh? No, you just your just your normal your normal turntable there, Keezy. It doesn't have the big bronze horn thing at the top of it. Oh no, it has that. Oh right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sound all right? Well, it's the best sound that you can get, mate. You know, it's true. You, you think of all your fancy skull candies and all that sort of stuff. Nothing is better than a massive brass blow horn. <laughs> Uh, could make a joke there, but I'm not going to. Hey, uh, speaking of the 90s till Is now. Is it going to be a, n- a nose joke, no, Keezy? No. Right, because remember, it's 100 bucks. Big bronze blowhorn is so <laughs> tempting. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, speaking of the countdown, it's time for the final song for today, song number 501. And if you missed it or you want to recap, don't worry, 7 o'clock tonight onwards, Greg Preble replaying the whole of the day's countdown. Beautiful. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Weezer there uh, coming in at 5.01. The final song uh, for the 90s till now countdown today, Mogi. But the good news is do not despair. It starts up again at 8.30 tomorrow. How good. Yeah, so good, mate. Are they still replaying the uh, all the songs from today, tonight, in the after show with Greg Preble? From 7 onwards. 7 onwards. I believe so. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I said that literally just before this song. Nah. Oh. Um, hey, fellas. I had basketball last night, right? You know how I play basketball on a Wednesday night and dominate? Yeah, a bit of poof action. Jace, stop calling three-pointers poofs, okay? First of all, I, I didn't hit any threes. I, I put up four of them and they all missed. Yeah. One was an air Leave ball. them <laughs> open, fellas! <laughs> I love Leave it how you open. try. That's oh, good. Mate, I'll always be out there giving it a crack. You know yeah. me. Uh, but what were your stats for the evening before eight, we get into this yarn? Eight points, 13 rebounds. <laughs> Yeah. The rebounds feels like a lie. Yeah. No, that, no, we actually got a message this morning with the and I was surprised. And how many shots? Oh, uh, I reckon I would have shot eight shots. Yeah. So all my two pointers I got in, but all my threes I missed. Right. It was actually not a bad performance. That's pretty good. Yeah. Fifty percent from the field, Jason. Yeah, thirteen yeah, boards. Yeah, that's not solid, bad. Keezy. That's solid. That's almost a double double, Keezy. Thanks, fellas. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Um I but, mean I wouldn't be signing you up or anything, no, but um no. I'd I'd give you a pat on the old caboose there and say keep it up big fella how many minutes did you play oh i probably would have played half the game we had quite a lot of subs oh yeah so 20 minute halves i probably in total played 20 minutes they don't do quarters no okay right okay super social do you find when they have longer rather than quarters they have halves you get a bit wheezy well no i just sub off all right um and most of the time i'm on the bench anyway sure actually here's it Here's an example of how uh, laid back our league is uh our scoring was done by an eight-year-old oh and it was mostly incorrect so yeah, oh, but so you could have possibly only got two points in. No, Jace. And like four yeah. rebounds. No, no rebounds. Our, yeah. our, one of our players went through and fixed it all last night because it's all filmed. Oh my god, which is quite interesting. But uh, I got a technical, which is when the ref stops the game and gives you a telling off and lets the other team um, shoot a free throw, free throw, uh, for doing a LeBron James style flex after getting a rebound and putting it back in again. Right. Because the opposition did it the play before. And we all thought it was funny. And so I did it, and then the ref stopped the game and told me off, gave them points, and then I had to go sit on the bench for a while. Oh, I was a little bit worried there. I thought you might have done a Keezy steamer on the court. But Jace, no, that, Jace, wait, let me finish my story. Seem, that Jace, seems a bit harsh. Let me finish my story. After she sent me off, I did a Keezy steamer on the court. Yeah, that, oh, sounds, right. yeah, that yeah. sounds more like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, well, that's a classic case, isn't it, of some people being able to get away with things and yes. other people just not having the charisma. Yeah, right. Um, it's a charisma yeah. thing, is it? Well... I mean, why else would it, it literally just happened and somebody else did it and they were fine with it and then you've done it and they've found it offensive so much so that they have to stop the game, <laughs> send you off and yeah. give the other guys a shot at goal. Maybe she <laughs> didn't like your mo. Maybe. Yeah. Because it can be annoying. What yeah. was that? Did you question it? Yeah. I was like, what's that about? And she was like, well, you've got half a mongrel. Oh. oh yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was the issue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is and that then I did a steamer. Yeah, James. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I love the show. <laughs> Oh, is that John Bon Jovi? I think so. The Hodaki Big Show. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Well, there you go. Uh, Coming up after five o'clock, a lot happening actually on the Big Show Tool Chat. So if there's a specific tool that you want us to talk about on 3483, let us know. And exciting news, Mogi. We've got an interview with the one, the only Don McGlashan after five as well. 
Legend. Some, I'm pretty excited about that. I've never met him before. Yeah, I've met him a couple of times. Good man. Good man. And uh, just received Oh, no, some... that's right. I've met him five times. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I met him seven. About um, ten. Oh, maybe 12. I've never met him. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's great, Keezy. It's good for you. Now, what? listen, some big news on that front with Dominic Lashin, which we'll be getting into in the interview. Uh, something well-deserved yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Actually, I was reading about that in the paper today, but I believe we're breaking it on the radio. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Man. Totally. All that after five. <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Welcome back, you yeah. mad bastards. Hope your Thursday's going along tickety-boo. Now, listen, keep those texts coming, by the way, on 3483 for Tool Chat. Yeah. Uh, because, A lot of suggestions here. Do you yeah. want any of them now? Or? Oh, I'll have a couple. Bench grinder. You don't want to grind your bench, you want to sand it. Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. no, it's a grind. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, have we done just a screwdriver before? Flat yeah. Screwdriver, yeah. screwdriver. Yeah, yeah I we think have. we have, actually. Right, okay. Uh, sandpaper? Sandspaper. Yeah, we've done yeah, that. Yeah, we've done Not sandpaper. Sands pa- sandpaper. Oh. Yeah. See, this is the thing. We've ca- we've done so many tool chats. It's, you know, there's only a certain amount of tools in the we're world, actually, tools. Morgan. I need to start inventing more tools. That's true. Now, listen, also, if you missed out on the Big Show Big Poll today, the question, very simple, four-day working week, yes or no? Uh, mm. I'm not going to be looking at the results because I'm going to be uh, announcing them after 6 o'clock. Oh, okay. you're taking over that, are you? Well, apparently, because you guys don't trust that my predictions, which generally tend to be very correct. I think we um, can you, get... you think You think that old Hoity J might be cheating a little bit. Well, for the record, I haven't looked at it, and I won't look at it, and I'll have a genuine guess, and I bet it'll be really, really wrong because I don't cheat. Right. But Good let's not get into that here, though. Yeah, yeah, true. I tell you what we should get into, but a faith no more. Oh... Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Kesey. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Oh yes indeed, Faith No More there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show. I tell you what fellas, what I have been really enjoying is this the lovely weather we've had over the last couple of days. Totally. And what it's allowed me to do actually, which has been a massive bugbear of mine over, because you know how I feel about my lawns, don't I you, Mike? Do. And if my lawns are you know, not in order, then Hoity J's head is not in order. It's the same with the vacuuming. If, sure. If my if my house isn't vacuumed, then J, Hoity J is not okay. Right. Uh, but the last couple of days, uh, I've had the opportunity of getting out and getting the lawns under control, and it's been it's been quite an interesting uh, experience. I'll be honest with you. Interesting how? Well, I like, like mowing the lawns yesterday, right? And, yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, da douche, and I was like, what the. F- is that sure. oh, like a rock or something um, up in you? Because you've got to you've got to realise it's been months since I've been able to do my lawns, so they've got completely out of control. So I go and look what's in front of the old lawnmower there. It's a dead horse, and I'm like, how the did a dead horse end up in my well, property? Hang on, hang on. was and it then, a James, live horse first? N- well, it must have been alive at some point. James, obviously, I agree with that. So yeah. were you could you not see the dead horse, or was the grass so long? No, that's long? what I mean, Keezy. My grass was so out of control that I didn't see that there was a dead horse on my property. And then I had this like vague recollection last year where I was pretty steamed. I have like a vague recollection of buying a horse. Oh yeah, and um, like taking it to your house and and bring it because I've got quite a big backyard. And I was probably thinking, keep the grass down or something like that, and yeah. then com- completely forgot about the poor bastard. And riding it into work. Oh, well, I was, exactly. The problem so is many, there's no parking in the well, city well, for there's horses. No, well, you can hitch it just outside on the pole there, but yeah. I'd, you need a bike lock, really. But now I'm faced with the conundrum of what to do with a dead horse, because, I, you know, it's a big, but it's a Clydesdale. Oh, a Clydesdale. Yeah, so it's a draft horse. Yeah. Um, Why did you buy a Clydesdale? Well, I think maybe I was thinking of hoeing my lawn, you know, and, and attaching a hoe. Like a plow. To, yeah, a massive plow to it. But Well, you've got a, quite a lot of um, cold air comes into your house. If it's a draft horse, you could stick it under the house. It might block up a few of the holes oh, in your floorboards. to stop the draft. Actually, yeah. that's not a bad idea, Mogi. So anyway, I've, you know, I, I sort of put that to where I don't put it to the side because it was massively heavy and I'm carrying on doing the lawns and then I get the old weed eater out. Down the fence line, get to the end of the fence line, whipping all that grass away. Boom, what do I find? A pack, a wild pack of undomesticated Papua New Guinea pigs. Oh, now, I don't know if you've ever... M- if you've ever come across an undomesticated Papua mm, New Guinea pig, mad bastards. vicious little bastards, yeah, mate. You mean undomesticated or just wild? They're, they're wild. Well, they yeah. So they, they haven't been domesticated. Yeah, but you can just say wild. Well, yeah. well, well, well wild, wild okay. is, Were they wild? Were they angry? Oh, they were furious. So they were I, angry, I, undomesticated Papua New Guinea pigs. Papua New Guinea pigs. And you know, as I've mentioned before, they've got poisonous fangs on oh, those bastards. Of course bastards. they do, man. Mate, wet me. Did you? She's got the old weed in her out. Dug, 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 dug. 
But um, normally what? they're straight up the old trouser pants, but your pants are pretty tight. Tight, so yeah, I was in right skinny there. jeans. Yeah, good on you, mate. Um, so, but I managed to capture a couple of those, and I'll be trading those off on Trade Me because they go for a bundle. Was there anything else in your backyard? Like oh, a possum mate. So or something? then, so then, <laughs> so then I'm carrying on with the lawns, you know, effing and jeffing a bit, going, "What else am I going to find there?" Do, 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 and the whole bloody I run over something with my bloody lawnmower, and I was like, "What the hell's going on there?" Com- Completely ruined my lawnmower. Bloody pile of bricks. Oh! A pile of bricks just under the grass there that I didn't see, see Mogi. I don't believe you on that one. A pile of bricks, man. They come out of nowhere. Oh, it just yeah. totally rooted my rotor. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. MGMT there on the radio, Hodaki uh, Big Show. You know, Mogi. I was wanting to ask you something, mate, because like, you're flexing at the moment. God, you look good. And I often comment, you know, uh, at the start of every show, just how bloody good you are looking. Thanks, mate. And, you know, and I'm genuine about that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are looking... Sen- don't you think, Keezy? I mean, yeah, he looks fine. Yeah, I mean, but no, don't you think he looks, like, hot? Why do you want me to be on... Like, yeah, well, he looks hot, Jase. You yeah, trying to... Well, well, I'm just actually, wanting... Keezy, do you mind, man? Because that's actually... What? Sexual harassment in the workplace. What, me saying you look fine? Oh, yeah, I didn't want you to get oh, pervy about it, Keezy. Fine, you are F R N E fine. That is not how I said it. But this oh, is, you yeah, know, it and, was. I, and I was, you know, because you know I've gone back to the gym there, Mogi, and I've been working hard, mate, getting fit, you know, yeah. putting a lot of effort in there. And I was looking at myself in the mirror last night just be, before I jumped in the shower there, mm. you know, fully nude. Uh, Fully you, nude in the shower. Oh, I know, but I was fully nude looking at myself just oh. in, in, in my bathroom mirror there. Uh, to give you to paint a picture, it was just the top half. Oh yeah, there, you can see a little bit of bush. Um, Yours? But, yeah, my bush. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this because I don't manicure. Is yours probably. a bit ginger, man? I've got a bit of a ginger tinge in it, mine. No, no ginger. No, no, yeah, no, no some it's, in mine. I'll show you. There's the odd, there's the odd sort of skunk. <laughs> Skunky Grace, um, you know, streak oh, in there. Hey, fellas, I think but, anyway, but anyway, getting to the point is, you know, I'm putting all this effort in it, to getting fit and healthy, and actually, I'm looking worse. What's that about? What's what's changed? That is because, interesting because I'm wondering, you know, after years and years and years of abuse, that I'm just shaking all my toxins up, and they're just all coming to the surface. I mean, I've got weird pustules coming out. I've got all sorts of stuff happening. Yep. My pubes are falling out. I mean, that's probably what a good the hell. Thing. What the hell's going on? It is a weird thing, actually, because you sort of you see a photo of yourself. I complete. I completely agree with you. Yep. You do. Oh. You put in no, not that 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 happens. That you you do put all this effort into your diet, into your exercise, early nights, or not drinking. Then why do I look so? Horrifically haggard. Yes, I know. And it's weird, man. Yeah, yeah. And you see photos of yourself, you're like, good God, oh, is you that know, what I look like? I used to look better when I was steam. I got big bags under my eyes. You yeah. know what yeah, I mean? You got those those um, sagging eyelids. Sagging like me. I- yeah, sagging eyelids. And I go, what's the point of it all? There's Mogi? more fluid in my eyelids than there is in a goon bag. I'm finding. Look at that. Yeah, I mean that's it's pretty. A lot. I mean, look at looking at it closely. That's pretty bad. I yeah. mean. I know, know, well, I know the reason, guys. What's oh. that, Keezy? It's just that you're ugly. Oh. oh. That's it. Oh. I was going to say, you know, I remember when I was back Keezy's age, 32, God, I was hot. Well, I don't I, think I'm, you were hot. And I think you're onto something there, Keezy. I don't think we were hot. I think we were young. You, and being young irons out the cracks. It does, actually. And people don't notice the fact that you're ugly. But I think if you're good-looking old, then you are good-looking. Yeah. But if you're ugly, ugly old, old, you were ugly you're the whole time, but before yeah. you were just young. Yeah. Because inoffensive looking, I think we'd pass as inoffensive looking, Jace. All right, then I'm flagging everything, going back to the durries and the booze. Yeah. Well, for example, Jace, I work out and I am seeing... <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show Podcast. It's Tool Chat. Eek, eek, eek. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> screwdriver, screwdriver. With Jason Mike.
Oh, good day, you mad bastards. Welcome to uh, Tool Chat with Jason Mike, where we talk tools, tools, tools. And uh, thanks for all your suggestions there on 3483. And this is, I don't know how we've missed this one out before, Mogies. Bloody hit, you know, bloody obvious as the nose on Keezy's face. Jace. The old uh, hard hat, mate. The old hard hat. Yes, mate, the old hard hat. <laughs> oh, oh sorry, mate. It's a bit of backy on the back of the throat there. I don't know about you, but I'll probably do the uh, 30 odd years in the uh, industry there without. Without needing a hard hat at all. Totally. And along comes the old bloody Osh. <coughs> ACC, work safe, all those mongrels. They said, oh, you got to put on your high vis, you got to put on your hard hat. Right, oh, mate. Whatever you say, mate. Most danger you are ever in is pushing some bloody paper around your desk, you mad bastard. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? Nah, nothing, mate. Off you go, off you go. And deh. So now we've got about 800 of those bloody hard hats lying around the place. And deh. You gotta have them, don't you, mate? Oh, look, mate. I got. I got to be honest with you. Be really upfront with you here. I'm not a big fan of the hard hat, you know. And it's uh, it's got a it's got a weird connection for me. Uh, the old hard hat. I remember going into the uh, out the, the the shed out the back there to get some materials, and the old the, the old apprentice there uh, wearing his hard hat there and a little tool belt and nothing else, and really going hammer at tongs at old uh, Darlene there and. Uh, as a result, yeah, that's where it all began, mate. That's where I, where I first came across the yeah. affair. You know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, and uh, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. I remember all. going through a similar thing here, actually, and uh, went out to the back there in the old shed, and I remember seeing old Darlene was wearing a hard hat there, and uh, playing a bit of dress ups there. And my boyfriend Jaden was going to hammer and tongs and thought to myself, geez, I don't know if this relationship's going to survive, you know? Yeah, I know what you're saying, Wait. mate. She was all downhill from there, I tell Wait, you so what. so this whole time... I mean, it was not like I hadn't offered her, you know. I'd, I'd, I'd said to Darlene, you know, look, what about we play out a bit of a scenario here, darling? You know, spice things up a bit. I'll put the old hard hat on and the old tool belt. Yeah. We'll see where we go from there. Right? Oh, oh you got a bit of you got a bit of damage in your roof there, love. You need me to fix that, do you? All right, good. You know that kind I said of exactly thing. The same so thing. it was even more gutting for me when I, you know, when I stumbled upon that yeah. sort of bloody carry on. I said the same thing to bloody Jaden there, and he said, "Right, oh, do you mind if I call you Darlene?" Right here. Yeah. Sorry, are you dating Jaden this whole time? Not anymore. Wow, it's a long time ago, Casey. Yeah, long right. time. And now, will I use that bloody hard hat for there as a, a roll out of bed in the morning and spark myself up a dart and look back at the bed where Jaden used to lie there and uh, pick up my hard hat? And now I've got a, a hippie, a bloody vodka strapped to one side and a hippie, a bourbon to the other, and a couple of straws out of both the bastard. I suck them dry before I put my boots on and get off to work. Oh, mate, I. Look, I tell you what, I don't put the hard hat down there by the side of the bed and, uh, you know, wake up, roll out of bed in the morning and piss in the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, fellas, uh, Don McGlashan's in next. Oh, oh yeah. backbone. Massive backbone. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Oh, ho, ho. Now, it's not often I use the word legend, fellas. The only time I really do, actually, to be honest with you, is when I'm referring to myself or Mogi. That's true, yeah. Um, Uh. And it's not often I use the word icon either. You know, occasionally when I'm talking about Mogi, I I might use that phrase. But for our next guest, legend and icon, I think, are completely appropriate. Do you agree, fellas? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Particularly when it comes to this uh, great New Zealand music industry that we have. And I'm talking about the one, the only... The remarkable Don McGlashan. How are you, sir? I'm very good after that introduction. Thank you very much. Wow, well, look, it's our pleasure. Oh, well, you know, Can I just stop you there, James? Yeah, no, please do. Uh, shouldn't it be Sir Don McGlashan? Like, what's going on? They chuck it over to Dave Dobbin there. I feel like you've done as much, if not more. No offence to Dr. Dobbin. But you know what I mean? And it's probably not for you to say, but can you say? Well, I, would, I wouldn't mind being uh, the Honourable. Oh, oh yeah. the Honourable uh, Don McGlashan. Yeah. yeah, the Right or Honourable. the Reverend. The very, oh, the very nice. Reverend. The very yeah. Reverend Don McGlashan. You know, and just to be to have that title conferred on you would mean that you'd, you could completely wipe out, you wouldn't need to have done all the study or yeah, all true. that sort of stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Immediately move into a different pay grade. Yeah, even yeah. even backbone Don McGlashan, I think, would be yeah, good. Yeah, backbone, backbone Don Backbone of McGlashan. this country. But actually, you think about it, Don, 
Sir Don McGlashan has a ring to it. <laughs> it really does, actually. What do you think, Keezy? Oh, absolutely, it does. I mean, one thing at a time, though. I mean, there's already exciting stuff happening for Don. You know, you don't want it all to happen at once. Yeah, an amazing announcement and a well-deserved announcement today. The New Zealand Music Hall of Fame. Um, you strike me, and I'll be honest with you, Don, I don't know you very well. In fact, I don't know you at all. But you strike me as a pretty humble character. How do you how do you take uh, accolades such as this that have been chucked your way? We heard you campaigned pretty hard for it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just, uh, it's sinking in, I have to say. Um, when they first told me about it, I I thought it sounded like they were going to put me in an institution. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, and and uh, not let me out. Yeah. So I had to query that. Uh, Fair enough. I am going to get a key and I get to I get to leave and come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite good. There's a view, evidently, from one of the upstairs rooms. <laughs> but, but I mean, I mean, you obviously do what you do because you love it. Because that's what you are. Music is what you do. Um, but so, what do the, what do these sort of accolades mean to you? I mean, are you the sort of guy that goes, "Oh, you know, that's nice," but I don't really care, or do you actually take it to heart and go, "Well, actually, I'm quite humbled by that." Uh, well, there's a lot. There's a lot of sort of things in the in the music industry. You get you get uh, um, uh, uh, record sales. You get chart positions, all that sort of stuff, audience numbers. It's best to not get too focused on that. Sure. It sort of takes you away from the, the core job, which is just to connect with somebody in the audience. But having said that, this if it's an institution, it's a cool one, and there's a lot of really cool people in it, sure. both living and dead. Yes. I mean, I, I mean... You know, I don't think the dead people are actually in the room, being no. being dead, but not physically. Um, no, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping it hasn't been explained to me in great detail, but sure. Um, but you know, people like like people that I looked up to when I was a kid in music. You know, people like Dave Dobbin, mm. um, uh, Sue Dave, <laughs> and the, um, you know the 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 um, Hello Sailor, and then going back to composers like Moi Pefairangi who wrote who wrote Poirier mm-hmm. and uh, and um, Douglas Lilburn. So it's all it's all a Across the board, and it's sort of an eccentric bunch of people as well. Like in a bigger country, I reckon the, the Hall of Fame would be more middle, more central, more middle of the road. Sure, sort of big hitters, you know, people who've made a lot of records and made a lot of money. Yeah, but but the New Zealand Hall of Fame has got a kind of madness to it. Like the top twins are in there. Yeah, and they're mad, you know. And and they, <laughs> they, I don't think they'd be sort of huge famous acts in any other country but mad little New Zealand yeah. you know? and, and I mean they deserve to be huge everywhere but yeah. it's that kind of thing and that's what makes it cool for me to be in it I feel really chuffed and really excited to be in it you, know? yeah. you mentioned record sales and chart positions and things like that um, and basically measuring success when you're a musician now that this is happening do you stand back and go yeah good work Don I think I am a success in music or do you <laughs> st- are you still like nah there's still more to be yeah, done I'm you done know? now <laughs> have She's you clocked music I, I mean, it sounds Pollyanna-ish, but I just love writing songs, and the, I'm happiest. You know, if if you ever if you talk to anybody that knows me well, they'll say I'm kind of grumpy when I'm not writing oh, songs, like yeah. Jace, yeah. And, and I really love it when I've started something and I'm I'm on the way to finishing it. You know, that's when I'm happiest, and I don't know. Sometimes when you finish a, finish a song, you get kind of sad because it's not quite as good as you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but that's what that's what kind of drives me. And the rest of the stuff is cool. It's nice to have, but um, you know, give me a, give me a song to write. We often feel that Don about our radio show. Well, the you difference know, is just, like it feels like it should be so much better. Yeah, the difference is as soon as I get an award, I'm out of here. You know, yeah, no, that's, that's the difference. Well, I'll tell you what, because you, you've been a busy man, so I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to a classic tune of yours, shall we, and come back to it. Okay. Oh, how about this one? Cheers. Oh, cheers. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Yeah, welcome back, you mad bastards. We've got uh, the legend Don McGlashan uh, in studio with us. He's just been induct- inducted, isn't it? Inducted yes. into the New Zealand Music Hall of Fame, and uh, congratulations on that. But you've been a busy man still. You're still you're still writing songs. I, I understand you've just come back from Canada. What was going on there, eh? Uh, I I did I did some gigs in Canada, but the main reason I'm in Canada is my wife lives there. Oh right, so I'm there I'm there about half the time. My wife. Oh, uh, that sounds perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah that sounds great. Half yeah, the like, time. Are you there in summer, and then you come home for our summer? I w- if I was organised, that would be what I would do. But I'm quite disorganised, so that's not what I do. <laughs> Some, yeah, I yeah, sometimes yeah. go winter, winter, winter. Yes. Uh, yeah, but I'm not, and we're heading into a tour. Um, I just I start a tour this weekend, and it's uh, it goes for about two months, and that's oh, just wow. that's just me and Anita Clark, so it's sort of a duo, and we we're doing all the regions. We're going to the Barrytown Hall, and we're going to uh, a 
place in Littleton, whose name I can't remember. Sure. I love cool. Littleton, though. Yeah, yeah cool Great little spot. places. Going to Glen Orkey. I've never played Glen Orkey. Oh, yeah, awesome. You well, you were talking a, a little bit before about connecting with the audience. So I imagine for you, actually, doing the live performances is something you really enjoy. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And you never know... You never know what's going to happen, you know. Like, like, and and playing in a playing a gig like to a thousand people in the, the power station, like we did at the end of last year when yes. we toured the the album. Uh, that's got a certain sort of excitement, but playing to a hundred people in the Barrytown Hall has got no less excitement. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Because totally. they, they go off, and you don't know what's going on inside people's heads, and uh, and they could be really moved, or that, that moment when somebody sings a song to you, and you go, I've done that, I've heard that, I've felt that, and, and you it, feel and more human. And yeah. it must be amazing for you to be able to go to places, like you're saying, there's still places where you've never played before, but oh, then lots. you go in there and you play, within New Zealand, but you go there and you play your songs, and they would know all of them. Or the vast majority of them. It must be a pretty incredible feeling it as is. a it's songwriter. A, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. And people come up to me. And, you know, when Tom Waits used to say that you, you kick songs out of the nest and you have to see where they fly and they might, you don't know where they're going to fly. And it's, um, it's exactly like that. You know, people, people have listened to songs, my songs, for quite a few years and they've got their whole own take on them. Uh, and they come and tell me that after the show. It's great. Well, one thing that I experienced a few years ago, I was doing the Hodaki Night Show here. I used to interview a lot of local <laughs> bands. It was a terrible show. It was a got, shock. He got, guys, fired, show, guys, and guys, got yeah. fired. They had to get rid of him. Support, was, guys. Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. Um, I interviewed a band called Darts who covered uh, Dominion Row, but they, they changed it. It was a punk song to a Dumpling House halfway down Dominion Road. That's right. I thought it was an absolutely brilliant cover. I, I did mean, too. That you, so you did love that because I absolutely I really adored it. it. I thought it was brilliant. I loved it, and they took they they said, "Can we take you out to to dumplings?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, take me and my manager out." And then the joke was on them because Tom eats a great deal, <laughs> right? So, yeah, yeah. And they were paying for it. So I think I think they're probably still paying for it now. Well, they're just <laughs> trying to get their start, right? And you're paying for it. And so someone comes along, asks to cover your song and change it as well. You know, was that something at first you were worried about, or no? I mean, they. You know, as I say, songs kind of take have their own life, mm. and and uh, I thought it was a really a really cool kind of tribute. Yeah, you know that they would that they would do that, and the song that they made is actually quite remarkable. It's got a it's got a sort of psychedelic, scary break like a drug b- breakdown in the middle. <laughs> sure, but it's not about drugs. It's about feeling a bit queasy because you've eaten too many dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It is great. Check it out. It's by Darts. It's called uh, Yeah Dominion Road. Just uh, on the, on the tour, are we? I'll tell you what we'll do, Don. We'll put all the dates and stuff up. I mean, how are sales looking in that regard? It's yeah, pretty much sold out. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. You might have to, you know, book some more dates. Don. We are. We're adding an extra one. We just put a, a new Whangarei date and and another uh, another Littleton one. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Don McGlashan, once again, uh, mate, a pleasure having you in the studio and congratulations on that, uh, that accolade today. Well deserved. Thank you very much. Bloody magnificent. Pleasure. Yeah. Great stuff, mate. Oh, Cheers. The Hodaki Big Show. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Yeah, welcome back, you mad bastards. Don, what a legend, a eh, uh, Mogi. Oh, he's unreal, man. Uh, big, big thrill for Keezy, too, having never met uh, Don McGlashan. And seriously, um, full kudos to him for uh, for the, getting into that New Zealand Music Hall of Fame. What an achievement. Yeah. Massive achievement. And it's just nice to be around like a guy of that age who's just succeeded in his area of expertise. You know what I mean? Nice to have a role model. Oh, yeah, you're going to get into music, are you? Nah. It's just good. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Yeah, 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 totally. Totally, Keezy. Hey, now, listen, coming up after 6 o'clock, uh, the result of the big show, Big Poll. Oh. Uh, the four-day working week. So yeah. if you haven't voted on that, get into it right now. Also, what's on tally with Minogue? Uh, and, Jace, I've got a bone to pick with you about something that happened earlier in the show. Oh, uh, bone to pick. Yeah, no worries, Keezy. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, uh, all that after sex. <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Yes, indeed. Uh, what's the bone you've got to pick with me, Keezy? Well, you made a nose joke halfway through Tool Chat. Mm. And, and if you've just joined us, you can listen to Tool Chat on our podcast. It yeah, comes yeah, out at 7.30 yeah. every night. Um, but no. we made an agreement. Hang on. We made an agreement like a day ago. Was it two days ago? That if anyone makes a nose joke from now on, it's $100. Yeah. 
Well, what you're forgetting is the person that made that joke was a character. It wasn't Hoity J. But it's called Hoity J. No, no, he's a character in the show. So called he's Hoity not, J. He's he's another person. So you you talk Jace, to a tall chat Jace. Hoity J guy and he'll sort you no, out, Keezy. Okay. Why does tall chat Hoity J guy look exactly like you and sound like you putting on a funny voice and has your exact name? That's not a character. No, that's well, Hoity J is the actor playing hey, the character, character of Hoity, Hoity J. J. Tool Chat Man. Yeah, yeah. Tool Chat Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm sorry, Keezy. you got no grounds for, you know. Right. Uh, I don't want you to get your nose out of joint. See? Let's put it this way. Jace, and, um, Jace hey, stop listen. it. That's $100. <laughs> hey, that is $100. <laughs> Seriously. Listen, <laughs> hey, uh, good uh, podcast outro today. Podcast outro. You say, what on earth is that? Uh, that's bonus material we do outside of the show. Sounds a bit like this. That's the great thing about our show, isn't it? Yeah. It keeps the brain ticking around. Well, the other day I was I had about just all day walking into a room like, what the f*** am I doing here? Mm. Or just, it was it was terrible. I was like, oh, God, here The worst go. one was when you <laughs> walked into the studio and you saw us and you're like, what the f*** am I Who doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> yeah, so you gotta be, you got to stay aware with that sort of stuff, monkey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sharpen mate? up. Yep, definitely, mate. Hey, coming up are the results of the big show, Big Poll. Yes. Stay tuned. Do you want to know what song we're going to, Jace? Not really. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. News there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Thursday afternoon. But right now it's time for... The Big Poll. Ba, 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 ba. Really good. Question today, four-day working week, yes or no? What's your gut, fellas? My gut says about 70% yes. And it right. feels like it should be higher. Yeah, I But I feel same. like there'll be people out there that run a business or there'll be all sorts of reasons. That people they that need no. overtime, that they want, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What don't do you know. think? Well, I was going to say 70% in favour of as well, but... Because you've said it, I'll go 80% in favour of. Good on you, mate. Um, right. 20, now, 20% against. For, for those listening, every night, Jason might guess the uh, percentage of the poll on the Instagram story, Hodaki Big Show. Every night, Jace gets it spot on. Today, we... No, that's not true, Keezy. Yes, you do. No, no, no. Yes, I you got do. it wrong one night. Completely one wrong. One night. We've been doing it for over a month. One night, you got it wrong. Today, you swear you haven't looked, right? Yes, and we know that you haven't looked because we, uh, we've we been watching you and making sure you don't look. He did go to the toilet at one point, but outside of that. Yeah, yeah but I left my phone behind. Yeah, he did actually. Um, you're both wrong. Right. 90, 90% in favour of a four-day working right. week. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. See how much fun that was, Jace? Yeah, interesting. What interesting. did I say, 80? Yeah, that's a shocker for Hoity J. That is a shocker, actually. Um, yeah. 80 to 20, but yeah, well, that's interesting. Would you, if they said... The big show, four days a week, but one extra hour every day. Would we would we accept that, or would we not? Oh uh, yeah, I'd take that. Yes, I'd take that. But there's no way I'm. Do- I, I what I, I don't would, think they're going to do it. What no, I would not. what I would accept would be five days a week with two extra hours a night. Yeah. Oh, you want more big show? Totally, man. We could start doing Saturdays. The extra big show, the really big show. Yeah, it, the extra extra big show, the big big show. Yeah. Or just the big show. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. Big's already pretty big. Uh, but yeah, it's up to you guys. Bigger show. The bigger show. The bigger show. Yeah, no, I'm just stopping myself. Um, D- yeah. Oh, oh wow. Great stuff. Jace, great you, stuff. Mike, 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 does Jace owe me $100? Oh, look, I don't want to get involved yeah, with don't it. Get involved I, I think it's easy. an honour system. Yeah. And um, Trying to keep his nose clean, no, eh? This is, uh, this is so bad. This is so, what's the point of even making these things? <laughs> Next, you know what? Stuff it. Mogi snack beer. Well, that's off. No, the one thing that the one thing that happened yesterday that I, I will back chase on. You seem to have forgotten is that you refused to agree to that. Thank you, Mogi. Bet. That yeah. is something that you did. Yes. So he refused to agree to it, and then is the only one continuing, continuing to do it. Continuing to do it, but you can't stoop to his level, Keezy. Well, no, I'd have to crouch right down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue, and Keezy. Soundgarden there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this uh, Thursday evening. And right now it's time for... What's on the telly with Mike Minogue. Yeah! 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, last night, I watched At Home with the Furies, but I actually did watch it. 
Oh, on Netflix. On Netflix, yeah. It's a reality show about Tyson Fury and his farm, though. Um, uh, I love Tyson Fury. I love him. But So it's entertaining because he is entertaining and interesting, and his family is as well. Uh, but it is in a reality format, which is garbage. A heavy, heavily American format? Uh, well, it's just a typical format, which is lots of establishing shots, mm. lots of wides, lots of drone shots up above things where nothing's going on, and there's one of the, like five of those every minute. Uh, and then there's lots of talking heads. And what I like, probably the best one, or not the best one, but... Um, the Osbournes back in the day. Oh, yes, so there was no, good. I don't remember there being any talking heads. But it would just follow them around. Yeah. And it was just, you got to get into their lives, and that's what this misses. It. So it's probably 15 minutes of content and about 32 minutes of just garbage. I think that's Kardashian's fault. They right. set up that whole type of yeah, yeah. doing yeah. things. Yeah, well, it is. it is. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's worth a watch, actually, but I'll probably just watch it here and there. But what I did like is his kids. He's got six kids. And they are gypsies, you know, they're legit gypsies. So they interview John. John, the father, lives in a in a uh, caravan, a gypsy caravan in a field. Yes, wow, with like his dog. Snatch. So that's that is straight up how he lives. Right. Uh, Tyson is in a mansion, which is one of the most hideously decorated. Yeah, I can imagine homes you could po- ever imagine. Is it really Disgusting. ostentatious? Yeah, it's gold and yeah. it's, it's there used to be a horrendous. show called My Gypsy Wedding. I now, don't know if you ever caught this that. This is what I was talking to my wife. It is a fantastic show. Yes. They are out of control when it yeah, comes to yes. their wedding. It was hilarious that show. I loved it. So anyway, the kids are called uh, <laughs> the eldest daughter is called Venezuela. Okay. Right. Um, he's got three sons, Prince John James. And what are the other two called? Prince Tyson the Second. Oh. And Prince Adonis Amazia. Prince Adonis? <laughs> <laughs> That's high expectations to be placed on you Adonis early. Adonis when you're called Adonis, not good. So then the, the daughters of Valen- uh, Venezuela, Valencia, and Athena. Athena? No. It's the Greek goddess of... War or knowledge yeah, or something, something wow. like that. And unsurprisingly, the sort of um, parenting method that certainly the mother employs, Paris, <laughs> uh, is screaming at them. Right. That's how she she chooses to communicate. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Six in the house. So yeah, I I think I'll keep watching it. Um, he's a, he's a fascinating dude. The idea is that he's meant to be retired, but he's not really. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, we're out of time now, so yeah. um, <laughs> I'll just I'll quickly t- tell you I, what I watched. I watched Woman Talking, 2022 film. Went on a bit, actually. Um, a few few oh, Academy Award nominated. Yeah, that one, great, yeah. great cast. Ironically, um, Jace. Yes. Uh, we was I got home from basketball and I was like to my wife, "Do you want to watch something? I'll have a shower. We'll watch something." She's like, "Yeah, have a shower." And then it was just Woman Talking for an hour. We oh, didn't end up movie. watching something. No, we just talked for an hour. Oh. And every time we went to put something on, we'd start talking again. Right. right. Yeah, The yeah. sequel to Woman Talking is Men Pretending to Listen. Yeah. Hey, I was interested. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Then it's going to there on the uh, Radio Hodaki Big Show. Now, we've been talking about Kiwi Pond because it's back, baby. And it's you and a mate's opportunity of getting involved in this competition, potentially winning the New Zealand Pro-Am. Yeah. Uh, and if you do do that, flying off to Bali do do. and having a hoor of a time over there for four nights. Yeah, boy. And playing maybe a little bit of Kiwi Pong in between. Yeah, that's right. That's so, a hell of a uh, competition to get involved with. People think, oh, what's this competition? Well, it's not just a competition. It's the New Zealand Championships. Sure. Commentated by the ACC at a proper venue, hundreds of people, all in costumes. It'll be on the big screen. Um, she's a full deal. All right, was at Auckland Town Hall last time, Mike. Is it an open championship? It must be. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, Anyone it is can an join in. Mate. However, keep in mind, it is a pro-am, so the defending champs from all the past years are also invited back to compete. Yeah. But, but even if they weren't invited back to compete, they could just come back and compete because yeah. it's an open. Because yeah, it's an open. It's a pro-am yeah, 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 yeah. open championship. And imagine so. four nights in Bali. I tell you what, fellas, I've got two, two of my girls over in Fiji at the moment just getting inundated with pitches of cocktails. Oh. Of beautiful God, beaches, me out there. yeah, me out as well. beautiful <laughs> beaches, beautiful food, and I jealous much? No, I don't think so. No, um, I mean, do you think you'd extend your holiday if you went to Bali? I don't think four nights would be enough. Oh uh, yeah, well you could do that too. Of course, great yeah. idea, Mogi.
Such Great a good idea. idea. And the reason you bring up Bali is because whoever wins this New Zealand championship then gets automatic entry into the Bali International Championship. This is to figure out who's the best Kiwi Pong slash Beer Pong player in the world. Uh, you, if you win the competition, Do you they get... call it Kiwi Pong in Bali? Nah, they call it Bali Pong. Uh, if you want to get a free team entry into this championship, it usually costs you money. We've got a heap of them to give away. Text Pong to 3483. And remember, if you win, you win free flights. You win bloody free accommodation in Bali. You win some spending money as well. So it's worth signing up and trying to win that grand prize. Great stuff, mate. Get into it, New Zealand. It's well worth your while. The Hodaki Big Show. Weekdays at 4 on Radio Hodaki. Well, there you go, you mad bastards. That's the uh, Thursday show done and dusted. I'm off home to try and uh, fix my rooted uh, dishwasher. What are you up to, Mogi? Um, what am I going to do tonight? Well, actually, the missus is away, so I will be... Oh, that! Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. I'll be on Do you it. want your durries back? Uh, no, I've already bought another pack. Oh, okay, because yeah. I smoked them anyway. Actual? Good on you, mate. Huh? Have you actually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, fellas. Are um, you babysitting tonight, then? Yeah, so I will be... Well, it's yeah, not babysitting. I'll, He's going to be I'll be, looking, I'll be looking after my child, yeah. Yeah. That, they don't like it when you call it babysitting, mate. Right. They hate that. The baby. just looking after your kid. No, yeah, no, yeah, not the baby. But we dad. don't need to say, oh, don't like that. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be dadding and just sitting at home. Is there any anything on tonight? It feels like I should be making the most of it somehow while uh, remaining at home and completely There's got to be a bit of rugby league, isn't You know there? what I feel like? I feel like getting on it because yeah. there's a bit of a celebration here. Yeah, I'm Do you reckon I can it. bring my kid down? I'll look after her. Yeah, man. Jesus. I'll dad her. <laughs> babysitter. Oh, is it babysitting? Oh, For I'm you, so it's babysitting. Confused. Right. Yeah. Okay. Keezy? Oh, well. Uh, what? We don't even need to discuss. I can't wait right. for tomorrow. Oh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be tomorrow. a shambles. <laughs> Just I, listen out for the nasally no, tones I'll come in of tomorrow. Keezy. I won't be nasally. I won't be fuzzy. I'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed ready to go. But, yes, I'm getting steamed tonight. Well, well yeah, responsibly. Mate. If that were the case. Responsibly. <laughs> that would mean that you haven't landed the plane. That's all. If you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed tomorrow, I'll be suspicious. Jace, I'm just going to do what's best for You've the show. You've got to represent the show, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The big show. Get into it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I will. Yeah, You've got to drink for the three of us. Is you want to get pissed up responsibly and then just start bagging me and Hoyt. Well, I don't need to get pissed to do that, but yeah, sure, we will do. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> hey, make sure you check out the podcast. Also, check out our Instagram account. We'll be back same time, same place tomorrow for the Friday Thrub. Until then, see you later.